Wow, fascinating. And um, we might um, take some review our student resources as well and, and um, link to your podcast and also make sure that we have that eSafety Commissioner link as well. Um, okay, let's throw to the floor that we have any questions. Yes. Oh, just a uh, uh, just a, a, t a question on your fascinating topic of sexting that I wasn't quite expecting. Um, were all of the respondents? Um, did they identify with their original gender, and also were they all heterosexual? Or did you find like a big difference in behaviour and outcomes for people who are not heterosexual, for example? Excellent question. Um, so it wasn't, in this, it wasn't in this study, but we've done um, other research that has um, looked at, um, we've, we've actually done research into um, non-cisgendered and, um, and queer as well as um, trans and um, gender, gender non-binary as well. But that was, um, we've done that research particularly in terms of um, cyberbullying, in terms of sexting, um, yes, so the rate of those who um, identified um, as homosexual were greater. Um, what's interesting is that in most of our samples, actually, so after heterosexual, the second, um, this, the second group, most frequent group in terms of sexual orientation is always um, bisexuals. So a lot of students, particularly sort of the, you know, in terms of 18 to 25 year olds, um, tend to identify as bisexual. So our second most frequent group was actually bisexual. So does that, I don't know, does that help? Yeah, so and I think in terms of, um, look, the sexting rates, particularly um, amongst same-sex attracted um, students, is high. But um, also keeping in mind, though, that um, in terms of prevalence rates, they're already very high. So you often actually, you, you're starting to get to a ceiling effect when you, when you see that, you know, a, nearly 88% of students have received. Um, yeah, they, it, it still goes up a little bit higher, but it's, you know, that there's already a little bit of a ceiling effect there. Mm. Any other questions? I'll just make a quick comment about um, previous presentation about the, um, you know, thinking about not only support services but how we can embed um, many things into our curriculum and, and build around that. And um, I, I would have loved to have had a session on that actually today, but maybe that'll be one for next year because that's an area of like just a personal interest for me. If, if you know, like, what can we do from ped pedagogical point of view to actually help address um, and, and ensure assessments and courses of study are built with diversity and, and inclusivity in mind. Um, and on that note, um, if there's no more questions, I'd just like to um, heartfelt thank you to all of our presenters today and the work that went into their, their really stimulating and uh, thought-provoking, um, often at times very moving presentations. Um, I hope that you will walk away today knowing something a little bit more um, than you walked in with and minds are open and we're ready to take on this challenge and continue the conversation moving forward. I hope it is just the beginning of the conversation and Texer is always available if you need to contact us to ask us anything. Um, please get on to our um, website. We're going to have a new website next week actually, so maybe wait till the website's new and shiny. You'll be able to find it a lot easier. Um, so we have um, you know, good practice guides and, and some other resources there that we're, we're um, and mentioning about it being our priority um, for the next, right up until 2026, student wellbeing, sexual assault, sexual harassment is in our corporate plan. It is a priority. We're, um, you know, we're evolving, we're expanding it. So um, I, I look forward to hearing from you all. Have a lovely evening and I'll see you all tomorrow for the big event. Thank you.